Hello, Laura Jean. Um, been a while since I've updated, so I'm finally writing you guys an update, I'm letting you know how things are going. I have thoroughly enjoyed the summer. I've thought about updating a number of times, um, just didn't get around to it. Just been enjoying myself too much outside. Um, so how am I doing? Um, this year, I have progressed very little. Last year, I progressed pretty quickly. Um, and pretty much from the point around the time when I was in the wheelchair full time last year, I guess it was November, December, um, my progression slowed down about December, um, early January. And it's been pretty slow for most of this year. Um, actually just picking up a little bit in this last month or so. Um, I've noticed some extra twitching, some pinprick sensations in my brain, extra levels of stress. Um, a little bit of progression, my um, pointer finger on my right hand is, I can't close it all the way, um, and I used to be able to. Um, but that's very little progression, and I've been very happy with that. I haven't been sure exactly what has led to that, um, but with the little progression occurring recently, um, it's given me a few possibilities that it might be um, what's been helping me the most. Um, so, one, there was a probiotic I started taking back in December of last year. Um, it was, I think it's called the KE99. It's a lactobacillus um, casei, C-A-S-E-I. I'm not sure how you say that. And um, just got it off of Amazon. And I was taking two in the morning and two at night. And I took that for a long time. I stopped taking it a couple months ago. So it's possible that that's why I've started to progress again. Also, for much of this year, I've been chelating using the Andy Cutler um, low-dose uh, frequent chelation method. And I've been using ALA, alpha lipoic acid, and just added in DMSA orally, both of them orally, and um, I have been taking them and then I kind of backed off of taking them, and so that also might be why I've started progressing again. Another interesting thing I found, and take it for what you will, my husband laughs at me about it, and that's okay, um, I decided to try grounding. And it was really interesting for me because I started trying it right before a new moon. I also get laughed about this, laughed at about this. But um, around every new moon, my BiPAP alarm goes off during my nap, um, like clockwork. Four days, three days, two days before the new moon. It's happened for about a year now. Um, no one's explained it. No one really understands why that's happening, but it happens. And I tried the grounding blanket at that time, and I got no alarm this time, um, which would indicate to me that perhaps my breathing was affected by grounding. But also, I noticed that whenever I used the grounding blanket, my twitching increased noticeably. So that made me think about my history of grounding. And last summer, when I was going outside and spending so much time outside and every time I went outside and spent a lot of time outside, it seemed like I progressed further. I felt so much more twitching. Every time I went outside, I had bare feet. Um, this summer, I've gone outside lots, spent a lot of time in the sun and I've progressed hardly any. It hasn't increased my twitching. I've been in the sun a lot. The difference is that now I'm in a wheelchair and I'm not grounding every time I go outside. Why would grounding affect it? Okay, the science is not all in on grounding. I understand that. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not doing something. Um, our nerves communicate, I believe, through electric signals. So increasing the capacity for those electric signals to communicate by grounding perhaps makes whatever pathology is going on, more able to continue itself and 
send those excess signals down my nerves. Um, just going on about these extra symptoms I have, like the brain pinpricks and the increase in symptoms around the new moon. Um, whenever I tell a doctor about these, they smile, they nod, they might pretend like they're writing them down, but they never refer back to them again. I might bring them back up again, but they'll never bring them back up. Um, and I find that really interesting in a scientific profession. Um, science, uh, for all of us who have followed the good old Sherlock, know that you have to take whatever observations you have and find an explanation that fits them. And it does not seem that that is the paradigm that we're working from in medical science nowadays. Even among alternative doctors, they're not taking all of the evidence offered. Maybe it's lack of time, lack of interest. We need more scientifically minded doctors out there, whether they have to be research doctors and in institutions, ones who are willing to look at all of the symptoms that an individual presents and dig into them because you will find things. Why do I have a cyclical issue going on here that might have a window into some therapy that might be helpful but the doctor has to be willing to take the time and to look silly and to chase every rabbit trail that's what it takes to be a good sleuth and that's what a doctor is supposed to be I'll get off my high horse now um, so yeah, the slow down progression. Um, I also have noticed that my times of progression typically have been, um, more increased around equinoxes. Laugh at me again. I'm, <laughs> I am not a Wiccan. I am not <laughs> into anything that follows the equinoxes. Um, it's just my observation that I've seen. Um, the first year I was diagnosed, um, before I was diagnosed, my worst times when I first noticed it was around April. I had a definite uptick in my symptoms around October, November, September, October, November. Same thing happened last year and same thing has happened this year. Wait, that was last year. Sorry. That was last year. <laughs> same thing's happened this year. Um, spring I had um, an uptick but not much progression um, I did increase my dewormer um, medicine during that time I've been doing the real food rebel recipe for an herbal dewormer and that seems to work pretty well for my body um, basically around the equinoxes I get a lot of um, feelings of pinpricks in my brain um, I have a disturbed, more disturbed sleep. Um, I I have more urinary urgency. Um, I seem to have more air hunger or difficulty breathing. Um, so how do I interpret that? You know, my best guess on that, and I probably said that before, is um, the only thing that I can find that is cyclical based off of equinoxes has been coral polyps. Um, and they reproduce based off of the spring equinox. Um, so it, it's not out of um, the bounds of reason for other um, small creatures to have similar life cycles. Um, so possibly there is something in me that is 
causing me those pinprick feelings, sensations, and other symptoms that um, is reproducing around that time. I also get a buzzing feeling where my whole body feels like it's buzzing, just vibrating. And it lasts for, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. And then it's gone. Um, and that happens around those times as well. Um, so, I am thankful for the comments that I get on these videos. Uh, one, actually a couple of people, I've found some good friendships through this. Um, a friend named Bridget, and she has her own struggle with an incurable disease and a very strong faith in God and a belief that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit still work miracles nowadays. Um, and that's been encouraging to me. Also, a friend named Nicole who has gone through a similar experience um, physically where she had some ALS symptoms, was treated for Lyme disease through IV antibiotics, and has seen marked improvement. Um, and her experience has pretty much encouraged me to, to further look into IV antibiotics. I did test positive for Lyme disease through DNA connections last September, I think. Um, I was on oral antibiotics, just azithromycin for a while. And I did the herbs through Stephen Herod Buner's herbal approach for about half a year. And I looked into the clinic that um, is kind of in the David Martz legacy. Um, but I was not on board with their method since they like to use pretty much every single antibiotic known to man, including fluoroquinolones, which seem to have a, a higher risk of damage to cells and neurological issues, which I don't think is what I should be taking. Um, so I did go see a Lyme literate medical doctor and um, I am considering uh, IV antibiotics. Go away, Siri. And um, I'm thinking of starting off with some dewormer and albendazole, albenza, which is a joke. Not the medicine itself, but the price. Uh, overseas, it goes for pennies a dose. A 30-day supply for me, I was quoted $22,000, which is over $700 a dose. My copay was $2,200. Um, so I'm looking into other options for payment for that right now. <laughs> it's a sad state of affairs in the US. Um, yep, you can charge that much and people will pay it because of the way our health system is set up where the doc, where the, um, the person actually receiving the treatment is not directly attached to the cost. Uh, it's not a good system that we have. We should see the price of what we're getting before we have things done medically. What else? With things I'm still also thinking of trying in addition to the IV antibiotics are B venom therapy, which I've already got a little tube of paste to put on my knuckles or my body and see what happens. Um, there have been a few people who have reported some limited gains from using B venom therapy. Um, I've been using Essential oils, can't really tell if they're doing much, but I'm going to keep trying them and see what happens. Um, gonna use the raindrop therapy method, although I'm not on board with the rub your fingers in three circles and then put them on the person's back. Um, seems 
a little ritualistic and almost religious, and I'm not on board with that. Um, I would also consider taking Ficampa or Parampanel. That's an epilepsy, epilepsy drug um, with some pretty serious side effects. It is said to possibly give um, homicidal tendencies. Um, but I have two acquaintances who are currently on it, who have ALS, and who have reported gains, uh, regained function with no side effects. Um, so I will possibly be looking into that as well. Um, right now I'm a little nervous about getting um, the PICC line for the IV antibiotics, um, but I don't really see any other good option right now for therapy. So that's the direction I would like to go. at my notes, see if there's anything else. I did buy a vibration plate and a chi machine. You can see the chi machine behind me. The little thing that cradles your ankles and moves your legs. It basically moves um, your lymph. Um, moves your lymph. I don't know how to say that properly. It's not probably phrased correctly. Um, it moves your legs back and forth so that your spinal fluid is able to move. Um, just thought that that would be good for someone sedentary like me. Um, vibration plate, I'm not sure is good for me or not. And I'm gonna have to stop for a while. Um, so other things I think I've benefited from or have tried um, recently, I'm still, I upped my magnesium. I added magnesium threonate, which supposedly crosses the blood-brain barrier. Um, and I, I forget how much is in each pill that I take, but I'm taking eight pills a day and I'm still measuring low in magnesium. So I, <laughs> I gotta add more. Um, also, making sure I have a lot of coconut oil. I, I really find that it helps my energy level um, and may, it helps maintain weight, which I think is really important for people with ALS, especially with all of our, our twitching muscles. Um, you know, it's using up a lot of energy. Sorry about the moving camera, the wind is going. Um, so coconut oil, the easiest way for me to eat that is to have it in a hot drink. So I usually have a tea and then put some coconut oil in there. It might be hot lemon and honey, or it might be like a ginger tea. Those are some of my favorites. But, um, so other than that, I'm hoping to maybe get a sauna, which would be an, quite an investment, but um, see how that works for me. You know, I don't want to do intense high heat, but maybe on the lower end of it. For my breathing, my breathing, I did measure at 35% at my last um, clinic, which is low. Um, I still seem to not have any significant desaturations at night um, and keep my CO2 levels reasonable. So um, right now we're okay, although we did start talking about maybe using a uh, It's like, it's a, you know, what I have right now isn't really a BiPAP, it's a VPAP, it's a variable one. Um, it's another one of those, uh, I forget the name of it, sorry. Um, but a friend online, um, her neurologist, when she was diagnosed, gave her um, a little device called an EMST150, 
an expiratory muscle strength trainer. It's just a little blue plastic piece, cost $50. You can order it yourself, and I did. Um, and you basically practice breathing into it, blowing into it. It's very similar to the um, breathing tests that we have to do. Um, I am so sorry, I popped the wind. Um, and so my next quarterly appointment with my neurologist will be in October, so we'll see if that's helped anything. Um, I look back at my records, it looks like every quarter my breathing went down usually about 10, 10%, um, started pretty much near 100% and now I'm at 35. I think that was except for one time where it just went down about 2%. Um, and during that time it was interesting that I was practicing a lot for my concert. So obviously I was using my breathing a lot. Um, so it makes me think that, if, again, continued use um, helps preserve muscles. And I, I really, I really believe that my left arm is, I can lift it still, I can't lift my right arm at all. Um, my left arm, I eat with every day. Um, so that again, that's continued, non-stressful use. Um, so, um, anything? Some um, on actually it was in autism, but I was researching um, the TH17 and the IL17 responses in the body. You know, I can't say these things at interleukin or something, and I don't fully understand them. Um, but on a page by Self Hacked, um, it was really interesting. All the things that he was saying help. Um, reduce both of those responses, the TH17 and the IL17 responses, um, all have seemed to be helpful for me. Um, so just if that's helpful for you, um, self-hacked is where I found that. Um, so thoughts on the Bible. Um, Christian still, believe it or not, and just to encourage you other Christians who are dealing with similar problems, um, I'm, I've been convicted of the importance of love, of humility, and of asking recently. Um, you know, I love that verse in the Bible where um, 